Hi, hello, welcome. Have a seat, relax, slouch. Slouch like mad, baby. Because today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Slouching. Slouching and breathing. I was debating whether to address you as the slouchy person or your students as the slouchy people. Statistically, a certain number of you struggle with that whole, uh, you know, stand up straight, breathe into your diaphragm thing. Some of you, after all these years, still feel a little awkward trying to stick your tummy out when you breathe. So I could talk to you, but, but I won't. <laughs> We're going to talk about your students today. For most voice teachers, if you know your student is going to take more than just a few lessons, you will start with posture and breathing, right? Or, or at least you will get to it early on in the process. But some people just don't seem to get it. You use all your tricks on them, you, you lay, lie them on the floor, you show them the color pictures of anatomy and you lean them against the wall and you give them breathing homework, all your techniques, all your mind games that you do with them. And still, they slouch. Still, they slouch. Still, they breathe high in their bodies. It's really frustrating, right? It can be really frustrating. It's partly frustrating because you know that your job, first and foremost, is to teach them to sing in a healthy way. And trying to sing when you're, you know, slouching is not... Hi, whoever gave me a thumbs up, thanks. Um, trying to sing from a slouch with no air moving is not healthy. And also, that slouchy posture tends to compress the larynx a little bit. And obviously, we don't want that. It's partly frustrating because you know that they are really limiting themselves if they don't learn to move a little air. Um, and, it's, and then it's also partly frustrating because it's such an essential basic part of laryngeal efficiency, right? You really want them to get it. Now, I'm going to throw out some ideas for you to try with your lanky people. These ideas focus on how to get those slouchy, lanky people to alter behaviors that they have had their whole lives. Whether their life is 11 years or 77 years or older, they've had it their whole lives. And sadly, I cannot give you a magic wand. Wish I could, can't. These people are used to what they're used to and new things just plain take getting used to, right? I mean, we all know that. They'll have to cooperate. But in the end, with you as their loving guide, these ideas may become very powerful tools that really get them moving a little more air. And this is what we want, right? I'm Meredith Colby. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Meredith Colby, and I help voice teachers create confident teaching and singing of contemporary styles, CCM, pop, rock, call it what you will. I am the author of Money Notes which introduces neurovocal method, a way to create healthy singing for microphone music. That's what I call it. Things you sing into a microphone that is based on brain science. You can find me right here on Facebook every Monday at 10 o'clock Alaska time, 11 Pacific, 12 Mountain, 1 Central, 2 Eastern, 7 Greenwich Mean Time, 8 Central Europe, 9 South Africa, and 6 a.m. Tuesday in Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Good morning, Sydney. My site is meredithcolby.com where you can sign up for the next NeuroVocal Method certification course. And actually, okay, I have to do a little plug here because the next course is starting Thursday, doors close Wednesday. I only do it twice a year and we still have room in that class. I would love to have you join that class because I already know if you're here, you're my people. You're my kind of people. So I hope you'll visit my site. I hope you'll get the info. Um, if you want to hear from other voice teachers, there, there are quotes on the site. There are quotes on my Facebook page. I have 
YouTube videos that from teachers who have taken the course and who have really benefited such a lot from it. So, and also shout out to my fabulous assistant Jay for all his work on my YouTube. Anyway, oh, and Alexis is here. Alexis, who BTW is taking the class. Hold on. Oopsie. She, she said, I'm in it. Yay. <laughs> anyway, Alexa says, slouching, chin jutted forward. Does school not talk about posture anymore? We're talking about posture. I know. The, ch the chin jutted forward thing, and then that compresses the larynx, which I may demonstrate later because I have a, a little fun demonstration that I show my students that terrifies them. So if you too would like to terrify your students, hang out a little bit. Uh, hearts and thumbs. Um, if you give me hearts and thumbs, people, Facebook likes me more. So feel free to just click that hearts and thumbs. If I say something that makes you go, yeah, or another voice teacher says something that makes you go, she's so right, um, click it. Click the heart, click the thumbs. Also, please like my page if you haven't already. Okay, if you would like the freebie today, I have a pretty good freebie today, actually. It's a download of a section of my book, and it's called Anyone Ever Call You an Ectomorph? <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like the queen of, ca of not catchy titles. <laughs> Anyway, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, so if you want that download, uh, you'll be able to remember everything we're talking about today because it's all in there. So put Lanky in the comments. And, and if you're not looking at this on my page, you'll have to come over to my page to put Lanky in the comments because I don't think my bot works from other pages. Anyway. Okay, so you guys know that I am a science groupie. So you will not be surprised to hear that we're going to get a little bit sciencey today about this posture thing. So there are three basic types of, well, three basic body types. The ectomorph, the endomorph, and the mesomorph. Everybody's body is a combination of two or all three of these body types, but some people tend much more toward one or another. So here is a picture of the body types. Um, this is in the download. I mean, yeah, this is in the free download. So if you put Lanky in the comments, you will be taken to that page where you can get this. So we are going to talk about the people who are in the uh, ectomorph category today. So those are the people who um, are closest to me. That's how I'll say it, instead of trying to figure out which is right and left because I'm backwards um, on this. But the, the drawing that is closest to me, that is the ectomorph. So what is natural to these people when it comes to body and alignment? What feels natural to them? Okay, we're not being judgy. We're being honest. This is what feels natural to them. Sorry, but that's just how it is. The center of the sternum is dropped down a little bit. The shoulders are slightly rolled forward. The head is positioned at an angle at the top of the spine. Oh, hi, Luis. So this is this just, just kind of how they're built. It's This is what feels right to them. And this can be made even more extreme if they are tall people because then they will tend to drop their faces closer to the people who are less tall than them so that they... You know, they just do that when they are conversing. It also can be made worse if there are people who sit at a desk for a living or a, at a, or a lot. In, in general, uh, these people have weak rhomboid muscles. And these are the muscles between your shoulder blades. And the, the habits that I just pointed out also tend to make those muscles even weaker. Additionally, and this is a thing, you guys, these people, they are accustomed to an unholy amount of stress on their cervical spine. Seriously. Okay, science alert, science alert! Your head weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. And if it is sitting nice and tidy on top of your cervical spine, that's, your cervical spine is the top part of your spine that goes up into your head. Um, it requires that 
degree of strength, right? When it's sitting t 10, 10 to 12 pounds. Now, if you reach forward or down 15 degrees, a little bit, right? You increase that stress as though your head now weighs 25 to 27 pounds. Please remember this when you're sitting at your desk or when you're looking at your phone. If you add another 15 degrees, your cervical spine is now working as though your head weighs 45 pounds. 45 pounds. Yes. So that's just a thing. Just put that in your pocket. Anyway, getting back to these lovely lanky people, if you say stand up straight to these folks, which, by the way, they have heard all their lives, which Alexis just said, don't they teach this in school anymore? Because <laughs> so many lanky people have been traumatized in school by people tell, yelling at them to sit up straight. But if you do that, okay, I got to take off my big fuzzy sweater here. Or, <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. About the head thing, right? So if you say stand up straight to these people, so they're, here they are being normal. This is normal to them. And you say stand up straight. They will do this. They'll throw their shoulders back and their chin up and, and thrust their chest out, which is just as unnatural as the thing they were doing a minute ago, right? <laughs> and also... They can't sustain it. It's going to last for like three seconds. It's, it doesn't feel right to them. It's not natural. We don't want that. This is not good. So today I'm going to show you a three-step fix that works with their build and will help them to exert that extra effort that they will have to exert <laughs> to get what I like to call diva posture. I know Louise has heard me say, call it diva posture before. Um, so, step one. Now, here's, here's the little three-step thing. Step one, this is the most important thing. The most important thing is get them on your side. Step one is tell them it's common. Tell them they're normal. Tell them they are not alone. Okay? This is huge. Every single lanky person I have done this with for the last 20 years has said, to me, and I'm, I do mean everyone, without exception, has said, no one's ever said this to me before. So please say this to them. They need to hear it. Tell them they're not alone. Tell them that what you're talking about is a shared experience with almost everybody who has their body type. Very few exceptions to this. Maybe if they, the person was a gymnast or something, they're not going to have this, or a swimmer where they have really strong backs then they might have this body type and not have this posture situation, but those people really are the exception. They are not the rule. So, so empathize with them first. Stress to them that it's not personal. <laughs> and it's not their fault. I usually actually joke with them a little bit. I'll say like, um, like this is the extra work you have to do because you get to eat as many desserts as you want. Because they do, right? Or you can say, um, you're gorgeous and thin and you can sing, so this is how you have to suffer for your art. But, you know, tease with them a little bit. So that's the most important thing. The second thing is you tell them why breathing matters. Once you've established that you're not picking on them, you just show them your version. Every voice teacher, we all have our version of why, why breathing matters. You don't have to make a huge deal about it because you're going to come back to it again and again, right? You keep coming back to it. But you take a minute. You say, here's why breathing matters. Here's some fun facts for you. Most people don't know where their larynx is or what it does. I, on the last like five years maybe, I have started to do this thing where I say, do you know where your voice is? And most, and they will almost always, these are singers, S not voice teachers, obviously, but my professional singers and, and adult singers, they'll go, no. And I'll do a little thing. Okay, put your hand on you. And I show them where their voice is or I might show, or where their larynx is. Make them swallow, make them feel it, make them feel the vibration. I might show them a picture, but most people don't know. So that's an important thing. Most people do not know 
that their body is, wait, where is it? Oh, did I not? Hmm, hold on. Oh, the bus. Nope. Nope, I screwed it up. Okay, oh well, I'll just leave this. So most people do not know that the body is made up of systems and that the voice is part of the respiratory system. So you might want to alert them to that fun fact. And most people, most singers, they know that breathing matters, but they don't necessarily know why. So we could backtrack through that, right? They don't understand that that the larynx is part of the respiratory system. So they haven't had the opportunity to sort of put two and two together, right? So it's always good to have visual aids for this stuff. You guys probably already have these in your studio, as we all do. Okay, step three. Okay, so step one was relate, tell them, tell them they're in good company. Step two, tell them why breathing matters. And step three, coach them into feeling a healthy cervical spine and that's what we're going to do actually i'm going to do my little thing that i use to terrify my students <laughs> my lanky students ready so i just phonate on a sort of a extended like voice sound right a talking sound and then i reach my chin out and they get this i uh, no, i'm not i'm not doing this on purpose i'm just holding out a pitch and i'm going to reach my chin out and if you guys do this, you too can terrify your students. So I'll go, ah, ah, and they'll go, whoa, <laughs> because it's like you can, you can hear my larynx being compressed when I do that, right? So, um, so that's kind of fun to scare them, but the, it also can motivate them. They go, oh. Well, I, I, want my, I don't want my larynx compressed. No, you don't, because then you're working way too hard. And anyone who knows me knows I don't believe in that. So I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step now for coaching them into feeling that healthy cervical spine. If you've read my book, you have seen this. If you have not read my book, put Lanky in the comments and you will get the instructions. So first, step one, you move them away from the mirror so they cannot see themselves. And then you tell them, you have, a, you have a magnet right here in the middle of your sternum, and it's going to be attracted straight up to the ceiling. But it's only this big, so it's not going to be pulled very far. So really, you're just going to pull your larynx, I mean, your, your sternum up this much, half an inch. So when I say go, I want you to feel that magnet lifting you straight up. So they'll go, boop, and they'll just lift up a little bit. Now, some of them cannot feel that local thing of putting their finger there. They'll just feel it across their chest, so you might want to check with them. But you can tell them, just put your finger there, and then you can kind of lift that up half an inch, okay? Really stress that it is a tiny, tiny amount, because if you... Because what they're used to, remember, I'm going to go back for a second. What they're used to is someone says, stand up straight, and they go like that. They do this really dramatic thing. So really stress to them that this is just a teeny little lift. Okay. Um, and you let them practice that. So you practice a, a little bit and, and you let them, and you watch them. Don't let them watch themselves yet. You're going to let them in a little bit. So this is going to feel strange to them. And you want to acknowledge that, right? They may not feel confident about how far is far enough, but you'll be able to watch them and you'll tell them. They may feel that they're standing too straight. Like they'll, f and this is fun, a fun thing too, which you can do. <laughs> but you can acknowledge, like, do you feel like you're like a, a wooden soldier? Do you feel like you're standing like this? You can check with them. They may feel that way. Um, and if they, they may feel that they look really weird because they're standing like it's like a wooden seltzer, <laughs> especially if they're young and or female, this is a particular hazard. Um, it might be hard for, for, right. Okay. This localized thing might be difficult for them. Uh, and they will almost always feel tension in those rhomboid muscles between their shoulders. So Again, you can acknowledge that for them. Do you feel this tension here? Yeah, it's okay. That's all right. That's normal. 
because you those muscles haven't had to work very hard. So now we're telling them they have to work hard. They're going to be a little bit fatigued. So once they have the hang of this moving the moving them from their little comfy, normal, lanky posture to that, like just lift it up, the magnet lift, I call it the magnet lift, into their singer posture or their diva posture. Um, now move them back to the mirror. Stand them in front of the mirror. And you first you have them stand there with their new posture. And the first thing you want to do <laughs> is say, does this new posture look the way it feels? And they will 100% of the time say, no, it does not look the way it feels. And then you get to feel really superior. It's so fun. So you'll... <laughs> I want you guys to feel superior. So they'll go, no, it does not look the way it feels. Because inside their bodies, they feel like they're going like this. That's what it feels like. When they do that, this, it feels to them like they're here. So then they, you move them in front of the mirror and they go, oh, right? <laughs> Which is really fun. And then you, then you, in front of the mirror, you do the, the drop it. Now lift it a little bit. Now drop it a little bit. Now lift it a little bit and really get them cognizant about what and really aware about what the difference is between those two feelings and that they see the difference. So what they're going to see, and you can call their attention to it, the head thing, right? Because when they're here, they're at that 15% cervical spine thing, right? Or angle that makes their head weigh more than twice what it should as far as their spine is concerned. So you show them that, and then you show them the lift. You say, look at your shoulders. They do their little slouch. Oh, the shoulders are rolling forward. They do the little lift. Oh, the shoulders very naturally roll back into a really natural position. So then we're not doing the, you know, the way we stand when we do leader with our hand on the grand piano. We're not doing that, but we are doing sort of like a you know, you just walked into a party and your old boyfriend is there. <laughs> that, that kind of just kind of, right? Lifted a little bit bad, badass. So, it, so that's really fun. Letting them, it, it, be, making them aware of how that feels and how their internal perception is out of sync with what's actually happening with their bodies, right? Now, uh, oh, I already did. Whoopsie, whoopsie, I made things for that. Look at that, it will feel strange. I went to all this trouble <laughs> and then I didn't even put them up. They're gonna feel they're standing too straight. They're gonna think they look weird. They will feel tension and fatigue in the rhomboid muscles. We can revisit these things. I've just done this so many times. And that it does not look the way it feels. That's the very most important thing. Now, excuse me one second. I have to see what else I haven't put up there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, there we go. So, yes. So you're going to show them the focus on the overall posture, the shoulders, and then the head on the top of the spine. Uh, they'll have to practice this. And this is the thing. The reason that you're going back and forth with them is that they are going to have to practice it. It will not be natural to them. It will not be easy for them. I usually tell my students, you don't have to do it my way, but I'm just going to say what I do. I tell them to attach this behavior to something that they do a number of times in a day. So for instance, I'll say, every time you walk into your kitchen, that's going to be your ding in your head. Oh, I just walked into my kitchen. Boop right? And you just do that little lift and you hold it as long as you can. And you don't worry about it. Well, next time you walk in the kitchen, you'll do it again. And then that will give them a chance to get the hang of it. So now without going into a whole lot of why, I'm just going to tell you that the, that whole release your abdominal wall and stick your belly out thing is, um, hold on a second. I'm going, uh, Alexis has asked me a question. So I'm going to pull that down. So she says, have you been able to do this on Zoom? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons I, I like teaching online. I like teaching online for a lot of reasons, Alexis, but I really like uh, teaching online because they can see themselves. So most of my students, not all of them, 
we all have the students who pay us money and then don't do what we say. Why? We don't know. But most of my students are now at a place where they are prepared for their lessons such that the camera is high enough that they are able to stand up. And, and I ask them to be far enough away so that they can see themselves from the bottom of the ribs or the waist. And that way they can do, you know, they can really see their bodies. And sometimes I will ask them, you know, let's do this exercise and, and don't worry so much about blah, 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 whatever I've said to them, but pay attention to how you're standing or how you're breathing. And then they can really shift their focus away from me, they might be looking at me, to themselves right in front without, you know, without any trouble at all, which I like. Anyway, okay, so this body type, these lanky people, um, the most of us were taught, <laughs> most of us were taught in junior high choir <laughs> to to stick our bellies out. You know, certain, we've, we've learned along the way we're supposed to stick our bellies out. That sticking your belly out thing for this body type will never feel right. Never. It just feels weird to them. So instead of asking them to stick their belly out, Remember that what our objective is when we ask them to stick their belly out is not that they stick their belly out, but that we are trying to get them to activate their primary respiratory muscles when they breathe. We're trying to get them to not use these secondary respiratory muscles, right? We're trying to get them to activate the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So anything that they do that activates that those muscles is fine especially for pop music it might not be for opera i don't know i never say that i know anything about opera but um for for pop it's much more satisfying to them and i usually use the word satisfying when they can think about breathing into their side ribs or their back ribs or you know you do the trick thing where you get them to breathe with their arms up on their head and they just wherever that goes is fine <laughs> it's fine as long as they're not lifting and lowering and shifting their cervical spine every time they take a dang breath um, then they're fine it will be fine um, what else did I want to say they look in the mirror as they breathe into their lower back ribs right um, okay so again <laughs> the the section of my book that we are looking at today is called uh, Anyone Ever Call You an Ectomorph? And it has all the things we've talked about today. So you can get that by putting Lanky in the chat, in the comments. Christine is here. What? Okay, wait. I have to see what Christine says because she always says smart things. Long-waisted people don't get a lot of abdominal expansion, so when we try to push the, when we try to push their bellies out, it's an exercise in frustration. Thank you, Christine. Amen to that. Yes, long-waisted people, right? So lanky people or fancy talk ectomorphs are always long-waisted long people, as you are saying. So all of this stuff. I, yeah, I guess I, I could have said that, but I never think of that, <laughs> probably because I'm very short-waisted. <laughs> anyway, but of course, of course, Christine's right. So that's another way of saying that. So all this stuff applies to them as well. So again, I am Meredith Colby, author, teacher, speaker, animal lover. And thank you so much for being here with me today. I hope you will join me for my class that starts on Thursday doors close on Wednesday uh, and if you can't this time I will be running one more class this year but this but only two in a year so I hope you'll join me anyway have a great week stay safe take care of yourselves ask for what you need and I'll see you oh and I won't see you next week but I'll put up a thing about that bye